this award. Aren't you glad that his promise still stands? I'm going to tell you something. Regardless of the reports, regardless of, of what we hear, regardless of, of what happens out there, and I'm not saying that, that none of it's true. I'm just saying that his promise still stands. And his faithfulness is still great. Amen. And so I am just excited about the opportunity to declare the goodness of the Lord. We we appreciate all of the all of the prayers and covering that we uh, that we uh, enjoyed while we were traveling. The Lord took care of us on a couple of occasions and uh, in some potential. Uh, accident circumstances that were near us that the Lord just kept us from. So we appreciate your prayer and your uh, diligence and faithfulness to uh, to stand and to continue to lift us up while we were traveling for his mercies to be rich and to be, to be great. And so if I move my gra glasses around a lot today, it's because they're trying to fog on me. I've already got a pretty good lather going. I shouldn't need a lot of warm-up, I guess. But we'll see, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just, I just want to thank the Lord right now. Father, I just thank you for your presence and your glory in this house today. I just thank you and bless you and honor you for your goodness and for your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet presence, for your, for the gifts and the and the callings that you have on our lives. And Lord, we just we just honor you and we bless you today. And we ask you, Father, to glorify your name. Let your glory just just minister grace and healing and strength and support to each and every heart today. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have. Uh, I want to share some things on a song in the night. Uh, so I appreciate so much the the uh, uh, bent, if you will, of the worship service. I kind of goes into that, but uh, but I also feel like I've got some got some ministry today. So I just want to take just a minute here and, and just settle in. Uh, I, you know, we had uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendous week of, of uh, actually two weeks of travel and, and ministry, but uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you, and I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So I'm going to move around probably just a little bit, not too far. I'm going to try to not to, because I probably, if I say it, I'll probably spray it. I'm trying to keep you out of the spray, right? That's the, that's the objective, right? Praise the Lord. Uh, but it's good to see, see your faces again. It's good to see you. It's good to be home. It's good to be, it's good to be here. Amen. But uh, praise God. Praise God. But. Miss Miranda, if I could, I'd like I'd like to just minister a word to you. I feel like that the Lord is uh, it's so good to see you and your and your young ones here today. But I just I just feel like that the that uh, that the Lord says He's faithful. He's faithful. You've been reaching. You've been you've been asking the Lord to move in your life and to and to bring you into a new dimension and a new chapter and a new expression of your of your faith, and I just want to say to you, God says he's faithful, yeah. and he wants you to settle into that faithfulness so that you can be, so that you can allow his presence. Just spend some time thinking about him and, and just meditating and thinking on his goodness and his mercy, and as you do that, as you continue to do that and you press forward into that, there's just going to be this real sense of peace and confidence and calm that just rises up within you and says, I got you, daughter, I've got you. Hallelujah. I've got you. He's, 
He's your Father. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. So I just want to encourage you that this, you know, that 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 there's a, you know, just sees just some bouncing, some like some like your boat's getting rocked a little bit here and there. And I just say it. I just say it that He's got one word to say in the storm, and that's come. It's come. And if you you hear that and you move toward Him. Then, then you're going to walk on the storm won't matter, and you can walk on the on the on the water regardless of the storm, whether it's calm or whether it's choppy. And I just hear the Lord saying, the choppy waters may endure for a little longer, but there will cease. There will be peace. There will be stillness, and the storm and the concern that you have labored and struggled with will settle into a manifestation. try to get in the word but I felt like I really needed to get that out of my system uh, so to speak so I just appreciate just so much the blessing of the Lord in the, in, in the house so uh, but what I, what I want to do I want to start today with Psalm 42 and when we when we're going to talk about song in the night and a night season is something that that tends to uh, you know abide and to settle over us and we find ourselves in the dark anytime we find ourselves in the dark as human beings we are looking for light amen we look for something to light our path we look for something to illuminate the way now in our modern world we can just turn a lamp we turn a switch on a lamp we can uh you know we can flip a light switch provided you know the grid's not out we can we can do those things and and it helps to lessen the effect of the darkness, right? We can, we can abide in light even when it's dark around us. And, and that is, uh, that's prophetic to me for where the Lord has brought us as his creation. Because there was, an, uh, there was a time and, a, and there were times and, and ages where the, the dark was just the dark and you couldn't, you couldn't illuminate it on any, on any level. But God says, I have made such provision and I have increased such knowledge that now you only, can, you only have to live in the dark when you have no options, right? And so the idea of a song in the night is, is not just that you start singing a favorite song, but that the song, you know, before literacy uh, abounded, singing and music was the primary way that we remembered things, right? History was oral, it was verbal, and it was sung. Ballads and stories about individuals and cities and people and nations they were all, it was all these, uh, all of the, the history of things was done uh, in, in, and passed from generation to generation and often done by song. And we still do that to some degree today, even though we can read and write. Before you could uh, write it, so, you know, I mean, you had to be able to write it to then learn how to read it, and then you had to be able to read it after it was written. But even today, we still rely on music. We still rely on a song, right, to convey something to us. And my, my, probably my best example for that is, is that if somebody asks you, you know, what comes before the letter P, you don't just pop off with the letter O, right? You generally start, you start singing A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, right? Why is that? Well, because you learned it in a song, right? You learned it in a, in a format and a way that helps you remember it. And so you're going to trust how you remember it best, right? And you're going to sing it all the way to O, right? And then you say, that's the answer. So, you know, and whatever, whatever you do with that, then you, uh, then, then you, you know, you, you work your way through it. But that's part of, it's part of a method of communication. It's, one of those ways which we learn, okay? And so uh, also, too, uh, you know, there's, there's a song that carries significance in a significant season in our life. 
uh, will show up for us from time to time. And you may not have thought about it for a great length of time, but when you hear the first few notes of that melody, it takes you, carries you to a different place, doesn't it? It, 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 it washes a memory, good or bad, it washes a memory over you, right? Yeah. And so that's what, you know, that's, so a, a song in the night is, is, is something that is designed before there were lamps and light switches, when there was just candles, which was a, a highly subjective to any kind of movement to blow it out, and, and they didn't have matches, so you were striking flint or some kind of a some kind of a deal it's not like you know you know the the matchstick was a tremendous invention for light but anyway it's often underappreciated let me say it that way uh, because we because we there we don't think about it anymore but in its season and its time when it brought when it was introduced to us it was a it was a world changer right so you either built a fire and you put enough enough stuff on it to let it radiate and last, or you, you know, you, you just sat in the dark, right? But any song that, that, you know, in a season in your life, sometimes there are different songs growing up, different songs will invoke certain memories. Uh, I think often of um, the song Away in a Manger is, you know, we look at that as we sing that at Christmas time, and it's, a, it's we call it a Christmas carol. It was written by Martin Luther in the 15 in the late 1500s early 1600s and so he wrote it and what we don't understand is the history of it and the history of of it was that you know when Martin Luther uh, the great voice of Reformation in the you know in the you know in the uh, early 1600s late 1500s he his wife and I think two children, I don't know how many they had, I think they had four or five, and but his wife and two children passed away of the, of the plague, okay? Now, Away in a Manger is a lullaby, all right? And when we sing it, we sing it as a Christmas carol, right? And it's, we know it's a kid's Christmas carol, but actually, whenever I hear it and I see it, I see, I see a dad who is singing a song in the night, which is why we sing to our kids when we put them to bed, right? Or at least we used to. This is we sing to them. Why? Because there's something about a song that soothes. There's something about a song that settles. There's something about, oh, I know some music can get you fired up, amped up, and rolling. That's why lullabies are typically soft and, and, and easy and very comforting and so you want them to settle into rest you want them to sleep well but so martin luther in my estimation in my opinion is is producing a song in his night season that is designed to comfort all of his children of which two of them will need to have the greatest comfort in the world before they slip into the arms of his father right and so, so that's just something kind of to think about. And I'm not trying to make Christmas morbid, okay? But, I'm, but, but I do think that it's important to understand the root and the tradition of it because it is, that makes it even more powerfully impactful because Jesus came to bring us peace. He came to introduce you and I to a comforter. He came to bring a song of life a song that was spoken and sang to us by the almighty creator, a song of redemption sung into the world so that you and I could find the comfort of his presence and the power and the privilege of knowing him. Yes. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Psalm 42. It says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? 
My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and from the hill of Mizar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of the water spout. Uh, I believe the message Bible says chaos calls to chaos. Okay? All thy white waves and thy billows are gone over me. So this is a tough spot, right? Chaos on chaos and the, water, and the water's rolling over him, right? He's in a difficult situation, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. And my prayer unto the God of my life. When chaos is upon chaos and the waves and the billows seem to be rolling over us, then we need to understand that the faithfulness of God, his loving kindness in the daytime is there for us, but his song for us will comfort us and keep us in the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 77. Seven verses two through six. Asaph says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My sore ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. four, five, and six, if I can do that. I remembered God and was troubled. Back to verse, there you go. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah, that means the word selah there, you'll see that often in the scripture. It means it's a musical pause for an interlude, and it actually means think about what is, think about what we've just said. Give that a little bit of time to sink in, right? It's technically what it is. Okay, next verse, please. Thou holdest mine eyes waking, I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. So in these two psalms, the phrase song in the night shows up. Jesus was the word of God made flesh, right? But he was also the redemptive promise in human form. And so in that, in, in that idea, God sang a song of redemption to the world. And what God had to sing, what God had to say, what God had to communicate for you and I to hear and to experience he communicated to us in and through his son. The principle of the psalm is that 
when it's difficult out, but it's time to call to remembrance that God's faithfulness is greater than our difficulty. His, his goodness and loving kindness is greater than our, uh, than, than our struggle and our tough times, but it is this idea that he that, that we can draw from him in a night season. In a time when the world is, when things around us are difficult, and I think that we are in such a season that we have these, these uh, shifting winds constantly. We have the, the shifting of information and the and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the influx of it. And so we are trying to move forward. And some folks are, are the stepping forward. And other folks are, are maintaining that we need to stay back. And we got, you know, there's a, 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 there's a divided opinion of perspective on how to deal with things and how to, how to navigate this. And I can only say that the faithfulness of God will see us through, right? Yeah. That if we are in this season, we need to call to remembrance a song in the night. We need to call to remembrance the song of his love, the song of his life that Isaiah said, and I think it's in Isaiah chapter 5, he says, I will sing a song unto my beloved. And he says, I'm going to sing a song of life, a song of blessing, a song of flourishing. A song where we start to move forward into a fruitful position and presentation of things. Hallelujah. I think of the, of the uh, song of Solomon. And I want to I wanna make sure I get this right. So I'm going to take my, this wasn't on my, on my list. So I'm going to look at this and. If I can find it, if I can remember it. And I'm not, I'm not remembering it where I thought it was. So anyway. Um, anyway, in 1 Kings, I think it's the fourth chapter of 1 Kings somewhere. Some of you guys maybe can find it where it talks about Solomon, about all the poetry Solomon wrote and the Psalms. And if I'm not mistaken, he wrote a more than a thousand songs, all right? And so it's amazing to me that when you start looking at those things uh, that Solomon was a very artful kind of guy. He was thoughtful. He was, he was able to write. He was able to speak. He had a lot going for him, right? Of course, his dad was the original, uh, you know, warrior poet king, okay? So... You know, maybe that uh, apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Anyway, that being said, he wrote, he wrote a thousand songs, and so the Song of Solomon introduces itself as the Song of Songs. So of all the songs that Solomon wrote, this song is the number one on his chart, right? This song is his greatest song, and it's a song, it's a love song between the king and his bride, right? That's what that's what it's about. And while I'm not going to turn to the Song of Solomon, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do this concept justice today if I didn't mention that. Okay? The idea that we're that we're looking at here is, is that God had a song to sing for his bride. And if we can start to uh, if we understand the the aspects of it and hear the melody of it and experience the heart of the of the songwriter and the the one who is communicating and singing this song to us then we have a chance to be able to navigate and move through and into what he says is true of us amen regardless of the night season regardless of what's going on And so that would be, that's an important thing to grasp and to remember. So let's look at, let's jump over to Revelation 15, and then maybe we'll settle and preach a little bit. 
He says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou, King of Saints, I want to stop right there for just a minute. Because what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the imagery and the pictures here. And the idea of this is that, that this is a, this is obviously, it is a reference to the, to the early church and its, and its roots and where it's coming to and what it's stepping through. The Song of Moses had been sang in Israel ever since they crossed the sea, right? You know, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider is thrown into the sea, right? And, and you know, the, the, uh, Miriam played her tambourine, and they sang that song on the other side as they watched as they watched God provide them with what they needed to move forward. And you say, what do you mean? What did he provide them? Well, as the waters closed in on Pharaoh's army, can I tell you in the splash and in the and in the work of it that there were swords and shields that kind of that kind of washed up on the bank. And so God starts to equip them for warfare. He starts to give them the equipment and make provision. They weren't allowed to leave with anything, but God provided it for them before they started into the wilderness. Amen. So what happens here is, is, that, is that they sing this triumphant song. It is this great triumphant song of victory, of the exodus, of what God has done in their, uh, among them. And they celebrate the deliverance of God. And so what happens is, is that in this setting, in this setting that is a tabernacle setting, the reason I say it's a tabernacle setting is because there is a sea of glass. And if you uh, have studied the tabernacle at all, outside of uh, where the priests would wash, it was called a brazen labor. And it was, it was a copper tub that had water in it, and they washed, the priests washed themselves there. And it was one of those cleansing stations, uh, you know, would be our equivalent to hand sanitizer, probably. Somewhat, right? Anyway. But what, what I'm getting at here is that, that, that what's happened is, is that he starts to teach, and what he's doing is he's showing from the old and pointing them into the new, okay? They sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the, and the song of the Lamb, because what he's saying is, is there's a greater exodus. There is a greater deliverance, not just one historically from Egypt into the promised land, but one that is personal, where we leave our sin consciousness and our sinful identity and we step into a new dimension of life and grace. Amen? When the, where the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, and the word of his testimony becomes relevant to you and I and brings us into a new dimension, a new way of life, a new expression of what it means to walk with God. And so it is this song that begins to that begins to to spring forth in this setting and those that overcame the mark of the beast and all that stuff that, that you know everybody that kind of that, that overcame that stood victorious they were all there and they all they said they had hearts that means they had instruments of music can I tell you that when they started to move into battle later on, Israel, when they would send Judah first. Judah is the is the name means praise. Can I tell you that they will that that praise leads us in? He didn't send in the archers, and he didn't send in the swordsmen. He didn't send in the cavalry. He sent in the praisers. And when there's a song in the night, can I tell you when there's a battle to be fought? When there is darkness that encompasses us, we need to remember the song in the night. When the world sat in darkness, when 
the world was kept in, 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 in a state of despair and, and, and the anxiety of Israel was such that they were hoping and longing for and yearning for the Messiah to come. Can I tell you, God began to hum a few bars to a virgin, hallelujah, and he said, I'm putting a song in you and you're going to give birth to a song because I got something to say, I got something to sing, I have a voice of victory, I have a song of triumph, I want to declare it, I want to sing it loud, I want to sing it proud, I want to sing it into the hearts of humanity. About to get happy. And so it is the song of the Lamb that now becomes the very focus of our victory, right? So now it's the it's the life of Jesus spoken, preached, sang of, spoken of, experienced. That shifts things inside of us. That, that moves us in a different dimension and capacity. And when Jesus shows up, he's the light of the world. And can I tell you that when your earth may be without form and without void, when you don't have uh, the right structure or the right order or the right uh, expression of, of how to live, and it is chaos on chaos, can I tell you that God's spirit flutters? He hovers. The Genesis says the spirit of God moved on the face of the deep. It literally means he fluttered. He, he spread his wings and he fluttered to the idea of softening the ground, softening what he was hovering over. Can I tell you, when Jesus spoke to Jerusalem before he was crucified, he lamented and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft I would have gathered you under my wings. Hallelujah. Oh, I've been fluttering over you. I've fluttered. I've softened. I've I've done everything to prepare you for this moment, and you would not. Yes. The song of the Lamb. They sing of the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. See, I believe that when the Psalms talks about singing unto the Lord a new song, I don't know that it's specifically trying to get us to learn a new song. I believe what the psalmist is alluding to is that there's another song. There's another song of deliverance out there that is greater than the song of deliverance we know. Because all we know is what led us out of Egypt. And that's plenty for that season and that time. But can I tell you, God has a bigger plan. God is greater. And what we have that then we perhaps have given him credit for. Yeah. And we tend to give a lot of credit. <laughs> but I still don't know that we do that justice. But a song in the night for you and I is the song of the Lamb. It's the life of Jesus. It's the, it's the sound of his voice. The melody of his name in our ear when we speak his voice. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is the sound of our name being called by the Holy Spirit when we hear his voice. Yeah. And it shifts things inside of us. It is, this, it is this hovering, this brooding, this fluttering of a move of the Spirit of God that is designed to reshape and prepare you and I to receive word. See, when God, when the Spirit of God hovered and brooded over the face of the deep, when he moved on the face of the deep, it was because he had a creative word to say, and so he prepared what was in chaos. He prepared what was in disarray. He prepared what was in darkness. He, he began to soften it so that when the seed of his word, when the, when the idea of let there be light or light be, 
was received. They were ready. The ground was prepared to receive the seed. And we all know what happens after that. Things started shifting and changing and turning. And, 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 and the world that was without form and the world that was void began to take on substance. Began to take on identity. Began to take on a reality after something of order. After someone of great stature began to take on the properties and the and the uh, uh, the. Uh, attributes of the one who was speaking life into and unto that mess. Praise the Lord. So as John sees this, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. I'm ready to move on now. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. So this is spreading out, right? It's not just a temple thing. It's not just a tabernacle thing. This is something that's bringing us into the realization that God has a plan for the nations. That God has an inclusive idea about bringing people into his presence. All nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Next verse, please. And after that, I looked. What's, what's happened? Well, you've got the folks with the hearts that's overcome. That's on a sea of glass where they've had this washing and this experience. And they start singing the song of the Lamb, right? And it starts to open the tabernacle of God. It starts to open the idea of what Israel had confined and restricted and closed up. It starts to open it to something more, right? Yeah. And after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. Now, when we read this, we think that it's someplace over yonder. Well, can I tell you? The tabernacle or the, uh, the testimony of witness is always a reference to the most holy place. When you get into when you get into Exodus and Deuteronomy more than a hundred times, there's references directly from from a, from this kind of a phrase that says that that speaks specifically of what's in the most holy place. And can I tell you? That everything in the most holy place is a picture of Jesus. Everything, and if I get into this, we'd be here that we'd be here a while. Better save that for Wednesday, right, Pastor? But he says, I looked to be held. The temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was open. The most holy place gets open. When did the most holy place get open? When Jesus was crucified, right? So maybe we're not talking about something that's somewhere in our future. Maybe he's making a reference to something that's relevant to you and I today. Because he's already opened the book. He's already opened the door. Right? Hallelujah. I think it's Matthew 27 talks about the... Talks about, uh, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. And then it goes on to say, and this is the same word used here as open. And it says, and the graves of many were open. All right? I'd float an idea by you today, but I don't want to spook you too bad. But you know how I am. I may do it anyway. Anyway, I'll try to leave that alone. Help me, Lord. But they are, he's pointing us to a song, and it's the life of the Lamb. It is the testimony of Jesus. It is the reality and the faithfulness and the truth that he is the Messiah. That everything they had built on and built toward was a Redeemer and a Savior. 
And when that Savior came and he was crucified and he was wounded for our transgressions, when he was bruised for our iniquities, when the chastisement of our peace was on him, and with his stripes we were healed, when that took place, then everything about the old gets opened and pulled apart so that that which is new can flourish. In fact, the writer of the book of Hebrews will say some years, some years after that particular event, I think it's in chapter 9, you can check me out on that at some point in your time where he says that where he talks about the way into the most holy place was not yet made manifest while that first tabernacle was standing. So the real holy place was not really in that first tabernacle was for its time and season but there was more that's why I said everything in that place speaks to and testifies of a savior of a deliverer he is referred to as the propitiation in, in uh, Romans chapter 3 which is literally translated mercy seat in, in uh, Roman or excuse me in Hebrews 9 so he's that he's the cornerstone which is the 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 uh, the, the Shethia stone that, that was set in place to hold it, that they believed that all of creation was, was formed off of that stone, okay? So when they, when they prophesy and speak of him as being the chief cornerstone, it means he's the originating point of creation. And so that was in the most holy place. Again, it shows us Jesus, okay? He presents himself as the manna, right? He's, and, and, and says, but you know, our, they said our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. And he's talked about being the bread of life. And they said, and he said, yeah, they ate manna in the wilderness, but they're dead. They said, I'm the true bread that came down from heaven. It was a picture of God making provision of my life to you. If you get into the, the rod of Aaron that, that buds, it's a picture of his resurrection. It's God has life on every level. I'm going to get into that at some point in the not too distant future. But everything that's contained in the ark, the, the, the commandments that were, that were put in was the, not the broken tables of the law. It was what was done intact. Can I tell you that he kept where we would break the law, he kept it all. And he took it and he fulfilled it so that you and I could stand in his presence as if we'd never violated it. The mercy seat's the place of atonement. It's the place where, where uh, redemption is fully qualified and presented to the world. Jesus is that place. It's the place where God said, I'll meet with you. God and man came together in Christ. God was in Christ doing what? Reconciling the world unto himself. 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So where's Christ? He is, he is, we're in him. And if we're in him, we're a new creature. God was in him reconciling. Can I tell you that we can't be in him very long without meeting God? Hallelujah. And I thought this was particularly, uh, particularly fascinating to me. It's a particular uh, uh, injunction that says to you and I, you've got to think about this a little differently than what you may have, than how you may have thought about it before. And that is that the song of the Lamb opens the most holy place. And it releases everything sacred in it to go out. Right? You say, well, that looks like plagues to me. Well, it's also uh, what talks about the wrath of God. It also could be his passion. Right? So think about this for a minute. In the first chapter of the book of Acts tells us that he appeared unto his disciples for 40 days after the days of his passion. Right? Okay, when hostility was poured out on him, when everything that was against us was laid on him. Hallelujah. It's bigger than I can preach it today. But there's a song. The song of the Lamb releases all of that, sets all this in motion, and puts you and I in a position to 
advance and proceed forward. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Says and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And I want to stop there for a minute because this kind of brings us almost full circle. I think it's the Passion Translation says in this to drink deep drafts of the Spirit of God. And so, what do we start with? As the heart panteth for the water. So my soul longs after you. Right? So it's about a thirsty creation looking for a source from which to drink. And so Paul here says, be filled with the Spirit. He said, the, the Passion Translation says, drink deep drafts. We are that thirsty creation. We need to start drinking because if we, as we drink of him and know him, then we will remember the song and his song in the night. When we are in a night season, when we are in a difficult spot, when we are in a, 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 a tough situation, then we can find in him a, a means to progress and move forward and navigate the circumstance. Next verse, please. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. How do we to be speaking to yourselves in psalms? And hymns and spiritual songs. One translation says in prophetic songs. Okay? What does it say? There's a song out there. He's the song. And everything that testifies of him will allow you and I to find our way forward. It will help not the just kind of take the edge off of, of what might be pressing against us and making us uncomfortable in the moment. It will help you and I find a place to settle and to be comfortable and to be able to move forward, even if it's just for a, for a simple season to recapture our breath so that we can advance. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And they sang the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. When we sing the song of the Lamb, I'm telling you, it turns loose. It opens all the stuff in the most holy place and allows you and I to advance. It allows you and I to recover our strength, to recover our life, to find a place of grace and truth that will carry the day. Yes. Thank you. Colossians chapter 3, in verse 16, I'm going to close with this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Teaching and admonishing. How? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There's a song that will teach us. There's a song that if we sing it, we learn him. We know him. We find our way forward in him. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A call to remembrance. His song in the night. So when things get tight, when things get difficult, when Trials come and testing and all of those things uh, find their way to our front door, whether we expected them or whether we have not expected them. You know how company is. Sometimes they just show up unannounced. Well, generally there's just a little bit of scrambling that's got to happen, right? Right? We 
case somebody runs through the house and closes the door on the rooms we don't want them to peek into, right? <laughs> Forgive me. Whether we have, you know, you don't always get to plan your trial, right? So the reality of it is, is that whenever we find ourselves in a situation like that, then we need to remember his song. Remember his life. Remember his loving kindness, his grace, his strength, his wisdom. His ability to, uh, to affect our lives for the good. The benefit that we draw from knowing Him. See, I'm convinced that sometimes we, we have the idea that if we know Him, we're not going to have to worry about, uh, we're not, we're not going to have these other things to deal with. And when they show up, we become disillusioned. Well, I think if you've hung around me long enough to know that, that I, I want to preach a wide enough scope of things so that you are, you're not going to be able to carry that particular torch for very long. You're going to find Him. God is a refuge, a very present help in trouble. Trouble. You may not go out looking for it, but trouble will find you sometimes. Sometimes more of it than you want. And sometimes our greatest task and mission is just, how about we don't make it worse? Right? Praise the Lord. His song in the night. Let it carry us to the morning. Another psalm says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And if you and I can sing the song in the dark, if we can sing his song, if we can allow the melody of his grace to fill our heart, if we can speak, if we can sing of his goodness and his mercy, Hallelujah, if we can meditate and think upon him, if we can allow him to, uh, to be sovereign and to rule in our life, then we have, a, we have a way to carry the night and turn it into the day. Because the psalmist also says, Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to use the song in the night. We need to not just, it may, it may seem odd to say put it into practice. But it won't necessarily make it, it won't diminish it any if, if, we, if we start to focus on that and start to set that and make that part of our, the fabric of our life, right? And you make that to where, you know, you don't just, why did I do that? Set a watch over your lips and set it in there so that you can, so that you can allow the joy and the peace and all that the Holy Spirit would comfort and minister into your life and my life, let him do it as we focus on him as the song of our life. Hallelujah. Father, we're grateful today. We bless you. We thank you. And we ask you right now. Lord, glorify your name in this house. Glorify your name in this place. Father, we honor you. We bless you. And Lord, if there's any here today that's forgotten to sing your song, that's in a night season, and I pray right now that, Lord, 
you would spring up within them and begin to spring a, a create a wellspring of life and joy. Put a bring a melody forth and a and a song out of the midst of their heart. And Lord, if there are those among us who can't find it and can't seem to can't seem to uncover the source, then I then then I pray right now, Lord, that uh, you would brood and that you would hover and flutter. That we would know that the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. He will sing. He will rejoice over you with joy. Hallelujah. He will joy over you with singing. Father, let your song, let it, let it be heard in the land. Hallelujah. Let the voice and the song of the bridegroom be heard in the land. And Father, we would know that we are, we are a people of covenant, that we are a people of life, that we are a people of grace. Thank you, Father. We bless you and we honor you. Be strong, Lord. You are strong. Hallelujah. You are strong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just, I just want you to lift your hands for, for a few minutes, those of you who, who just, just worship, just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you're doing. Thank you, Father, for the life that you're, that you're pouring out, that you are stirring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the grace you're given. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Miss Hazel, we speak peace in your life, in your home. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak peace. Where you've been fearful, where there's been this 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 uh, spirit of torment that 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 has brought fear into you, I speak. We command it to uh, loose your house and loose your heart and, and loose your mind. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sister, I'm just seeing uh, there, there's just a real settling of peace uh, that God has for you right now. Pour it out on her right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's been a lot of stress, a lot of turmoil. You're hearing a lot of stuff. I just hear a lot of chatter around you. I don't know whether it's from your family, from your youngest, from your kids, your grandkids, where it's from. I just hear a lot of chatter. And I want you to, I'm just hearing the Lord say, you need to hear my voice and sing my song. And let me take you into my presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? Yeah, just wash over her right now, Father. Just, oh, Lord Jesus, yeah, just hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just see your anxiety melting. I see this. I see this fear just kind of, I, I just watch it like it's evaporating off of you. It's been like this block, this this block of ice uh, in, encasing your mind and the way you think. And, and I just see this melting off of you right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Just put your hands. I'm just, I need some real encouragement here. I just want you to put your hands in the Lord. Put your hands in the air to the Lord right now. There's some real encouragement that you need. There's just if you need, I just feel like there's a that there's a real spirit of encouragement. Hallelujah! Where God's saying, "I want you to, I, I want to just loose some things, loose some things, and 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 shift some things for you, and shift shift some things even even."
even in perception for some. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord, for refreshing for Sister Linda back there. Father God, for Sister Linda McClung, just a real refreshing on her life. Lord, you're just springing up. I just see I just see your sail filling with wind right now. I just see uh, the Lord just just meeting with you as you uh, as you just have your hands lifted up. You're saying, here I am, Lord. Here I am. And he said, here I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all that's been troubling you, all that's been fighting, all that's been kicking at you, it's been hard. I hear the Holy Ghost say it's been hard. You've been kicking against the pricks. But I'm telling you right now, there's a, there's, there's a shifting in the harness. Amen. There's a shifting in the way this thing's working in your circumstance. God is moving some things and shifting some things. Even, even in your work, even in how things are done, I see some real wisdom coming to you for how to deal with some of the things that you have in front of you as far as, as, far as your work situation goes. And as far as your home situation, I see, I see God giving you wisdom for the for the kids. I see, I see the because there's been some things where you thought, God, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do about this. But I'm telling you, I just see the Lord, the Lord saying, I got you, I got you, daughter, I got you, and I'm going to show you. Let me lead you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to make it real and quicken you and quicken the way in you and to where you hear my voice say this is the way walk in it this is where you are pursue and go after this and I just I just hear the Lord saying he's opening your ears to hear that voice hallelujah and a real refreshing not just of strength and not just a washing over of peace but joy there's a real there's a real season of joy it's been a real dry spell for you amen but there's a real season of joy that is flooding your ground i see i see the desert blossoming like a rose hallelujah i see rivers and streams in the desert and when that happens it ain't a desert anymore sis hallelujah Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, give the Lord a hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that because it's not just for her. There's some others that can, that can receive a word like that today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. 